The subject of the painting is one of the Karmapas from the famous Karmapa incarnation lineage. Uh, this figure is the ninth Karmapa, Wangchuk Dorje. The painting itself is dated to the last half, possibly last quarter of the of the really the 17th century. Now, it's possible an argument can be made that this painting belongs to the early 18th century, but the evidence is not really there yet for that type of conclusion. Now, the composition belongs to a large painting set, uh, which, is, which is, of course, depicting some type of uh, Karma Kagyu lineage. Now, it does not depict the incarnation lineage of the Karmapas. It, it depicts some kind of uh, instruction lineage, possibly the Mahamudra uh, Golden Garland lineage, uh, but it's not really clear because we don't have enough examples from this large set, which probably had 25 paintings approximately originally. Uh, we only have close to five or six um, known compositions. Um, so we don't know where all the other paintings are, if they still exist. Um, now, why we know it is not part of a Karmapa incarnation lineage is because we have some of the paintings which are known from this set are not Karmapas. And so therefore, it means that it, it's some other type of lineage, not an incarnation lineage but rather a teaching lineage. And what's unusual about it also is the, the, the last figure within the lineage that we have uh, actually a painting of from this set is the, uh, is the fifth Situ incarnation. And this is very unusual because the fifth Situ doesn't actually appear typically in the Kagyu Mahamudra uh, Golden Garland lineage. So, so right now it, it's unclear as to what lineage overall in total is being depicted. Now, in this particular composition, what we have is we have uh, Karmapa Wangchuk Dorje, um, and he's uh, uh, facing his right, so so our left, which means this painting would have hung at the center, uh, at the front of a temple. It would have hung to our right, and he would have been looking inwards towards the central Vajradhara uh, at the center of the front of the temple. And all of the other uh, paintings would be arranged around in chronological order. Um, at the upper left side, we have a Vajra Amitayas, and this is a this is a, a revealed treasure tradition form of Amitayas, um, more of a tantric uh, deity. At the lower right, we have several uh, monastic figures that are that are engaged in some sort of a narrative uh, depiction. There is, in front of Karmapa on the throne, we, we have a kind of a, of a, of a flask, um, a vase with a spout and a handle, but we have flowers in it. So this is actually uh, imitating an initiation vase, but more in a Chinese style. Then we also have the eight-spoked uh, uh, Dharma wheel in front, and then to a little bit to our right, then we have a philosopher's stone, and this is very much comes out of Chinese um, artistic culture. Now, emanating from the philosopher's stone is this is a stream, this stream of, of incense or smoke that's wafting upwards to the top right hand corner, where we have clouds, and then sort of hidden in those clouds is an arhat figure or a, or an elder or one of the staviras in chinese would be lohan so we have this figure um, and what's interesting is the other compositions that are known from this larger painting set karma Kagyu painting set we do have other uh, elders that are depicted in the upper right or left corner as well um, now notice on the clouds, on the outer edge of the clouds, we have these, these kind of uh, lobed or almost rounded serrated edges that are in a green or a greenish blue color. This is very much uh, indicative of uh, mid to late 
um, 17th century, a painting style developed by or attributed to Choying Jatso in, in central Tibet. So th this also helps to date the, the, the painting style to, to um, late um, 17th century, if not more, more, more so. Um, now, at the lower right side, we actually have a figure that would, typically would be a, a Yama Dharma Raja, a protector figure. But in this case, it's actually a form of Vajra Bhairava uh, with one face, two arms, and a buffalo head. And we also know that by inscription and also because there's no uh, consort uh, for the figure. So this is just an introduction just to the, the general elements. We didn't go into uh, the landscape. Uh, or, or any of the furnishings. So there are lots of elements to this painting that are interesting and that can be indicative as to how we come to date this particular painting and the set it belongs to. But this is just a beginning. So don't forget, press the like button, you can share, you can subscribe, and you can support Har on Patreon.